All right, here we are back in SimHub. Uh, let's go ahead and create the relative timer uh, to just the driver ahead. Uh, I'll post a link down in the description so you can go ahead and download this and then you can add driver behind. You can add additional drivers if you want, but right now we're just gonna do the basics. So we're in SimHub. I've got a dashboard already started. This is brand new, it's blank. So let's go ahead and for our relative, let's create a box to kind of frame everything in. Now this is gonna be well oversized. So if you do copy and paste this into a dashboard of your own, you're gonna to have to make some modifications, but that's all right. So we're gonna give this slightly bigger border. Uh, we're gonna make it four, so it kind of stands out a little more. Now what we wanna do is we wanna get the driver's name. We're gonna come up here, I'm gonna add a text box. Driver name, we're gonna make this font a little easier to fit. And even that's going to be too big. Oops, my keyboard seems to have stuck. 20. Too small. A lot of this is trial and error. All right, we will center it all. Kind of fit it in this box right here. And I think we're okay. So we've got our driver name now but we don't want it to display just the driver name. We want to apply a function to this so that it displays the driver of the vehicle that's in front of us on track. So let's go over to the main menu. And if you go to available properties and you type in the search bar, driver ahead, and scroll down till you find persistent tracker plugin. These are gonna be what you want for this relative timer. And if you're gonna build a leaderboard, you're gonna to wanna to go here as well. So driver ahead zero zero is the vehicle that is directly in front of us, whether we are on track or in the pits, that is what zero zero means. Zero one is the car that is in front of that car. Zero two is then another car in front and you can keep counting up. Uh, same for driver behind. So if you were to search instead of ahead, driver behind, zero, zero is going to be the car directly behind us. And again, whether on track or in the pits. So we want to grab driver ahead name. So we'll right click, copy the name, come back into here, click the gray function box, add the computed value. We're going to add brackets. And we don't need to apply any formatting to this because it's just a raw text field. We'll click OK. Now when we're in an actual session, um, the dashboard will display the name of the driver in front of us. Let's add a second one. I'm gonna bring this up here. We'll kind of, again, we'll fit it in the box. We're going to make this much smaller. Make this font size 20. Center it, center it. And for this one, we want to bring in Driver IR. Let's pull in the I rating of the driver in front of us because I think that's a nice thing to have. We're going to go back to here. Um, again, driver ahead, zero, zero, I rating, right click, copy the name, apply the function to our text field. We're going to open our brackets, paste that in, close our brackets, and we are good to go. Now, this will display it as just a four digit number for the I rating. So 4324. Um, you can adjust the formatting if you want to make it display like 4.2. Uh, that's entirely up to you, but I like to leave it as the whole number. All right, so we're going to add one more text field. This one is going to be a little larger. And we're going to fit it within our box. We're going to center our text. Now, I don't know what the font size needs to be here. So we're going to go minutes, seconds. And we only want to go to the first decimal point here just to make it a little easier to read. All right. And the size 50 font is too big. So we're going to make it a 40. Now we need to go back to the main menu. And let's get gap. Right click. Copy the name. Come back here. Whoops, that's font size binding. I don't want that. We want text. 
we want to add a value to this. We want to go here. We want to copy and paste this gap. Now for here, you do need to click the result format dropdown. Um, and then we want to go right here, minutes, seconds, and then fractions, but you can get rid of those and it will just display the gap that way. And that's kind of the basics of building our relative timer. It's really that simple, but we want to take it that next step. We want to add some cool functionality in here so we don't have to look down to see what that gap is. We, we just want to look to see, hey, are we gaining time to the guy in front of us? That's what we want to know. So let's go ahead and click on this big border right here again. Now the border is behind everything else. So when the background of this box changes colors, we'll still be able to see the text that's there. And you can apply this to any one of these individual frames as well, but I want to apply it to everything. So let's go ahead and for our rectangle our frame for this we need to adjust the background color we're going to apply a function to it and we're going to click not computed value this time but computed color and we want our color to go from black to green because green is good we know if we're if it's green we're gaining time on our driver now i've already kind of pre-calculated this formula out because it took me a little bit of work it's on my notepad here I'm going to copy it and paste it in. So right now, what this is saying is that if the gap is zero, it's just going to give us a little hyphen in there and it's not going to change any colors. If there is no gap, if the gap is null, that's what it means it just doesn't exist. Um, it's going to be nothing or if it's less than zero, likewise. But if that gap is decreasing and we are gaining time it's going to apply this right here not all of that but just this and this is going to change the color to green so we'll just click ok and there we have it now this whole thing will change if we are gaining time on the driver in front of us um, but within reason obviously if we're 24 seconds back and we're just gaining a few tenths every lap this is not going to do that it's it's the way it's coded you have to be within three seconds to have it um, turn green so if you have any questions uh, please put it in the comments below i will do my best to answer all of them um, and as always please you know give this video a thumbs up so that uh, more people can find my sim hub tutorials and understand what a powerful tool this really is for us as sim racers thank you